In the Quran, God speaks about the stages of man's embryonic development. We created man from an extract of clay, then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into an anako, means, leech, suspended thing, and blood clot. Then we made the anako into a mudra, chewed substance. Literally, the Arabic word anako has three meanings. First, leech, second, suspended thing in the third blood clot. In comparing a leech to an embryo in, in the Angalaka stage, we find similarity between the two as we can see in the figure one. Also that also the embryo at this stage obtains nourishment from the blood of the mother, similar to the leech which feeds on the blood of others. The second meaning of the word Angalaka is suspended thing. This is what we can see in the figures two and three. The suspension of the embryo during the Angalaka stage in the womb of the mother. The third meaning of the word Angalaka is blood clot. We found that the external appearance of the embryo and its sex during the Angalaka stage is similar to that of a blood clot. This is due to the presence of re relatively large amounts of blood present in the embryo during, the t during this stage. Also during this stage, the blood in the embryo does not circulate until the end of the week of the third week thus the embryo at this stage is like a clot of blood so the three meanings of the word anako correspond accurately to the descriptions of the embryo at the anako stage the next stage mentioned in the verse is the mudra stage the arabic word mudra means chewed substance if one were to take a piece of gum and chew it in his or her mouth and then compare it with an embryo at the mudra stage we would conclude that the embryo at the mudra stage acquires the appearance of a substitute this is because of the somites at the back of the embryo that someone resembled that must chewed in substance how could muhammad have possibly known of this 
1,400 years ago, when scientists have only recently discovered this using advanced e equipment and powerful microscopes which did not exist at that time. Hem and Lee Woon Hook were the first scientists to observe human sperm cells, spermatozoa, using an improved microscopes in 1977, more than 1,000 years after Muhammad. They mistakenly thought that the sperm cell contained a miniature preformed human being that grew when it was deposited in the female genital tract. Professor Emeritus Keith Elmo is one of the world's most prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human which has been translated into eight languages. This book is scientific reference work and was chosen by a special comi comi committee in the United States as the best book authored by one person. Dr. Keith Moore is Professor Emeritus of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Toronto, Canada. There, he was Associate Dean of Basic Science at the Faculty of Medicine and for eight years was the Chairman of the Department of Anatomy. In 1984, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada and J.C. Began Award from Canadian Association of Anatomists. He has directed many international associations such as Canadian and American Association of Anatomists and the Council of the Union of Biological Science. In 1981, during the 7th Medical Conference in Daman, Saudi Arabia, Professor Moore said, it has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God, all because all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proved to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God. Consequently, Professor Mu was asked the following question. Does this mean that you believe that Quran is the word of God? He replied, I find no difficulty in accepting this. During one conference, Professor Moore stated, because the staging of the human embryos is complex, owing to the continuous process of change during development, it proposed that a new system of classification could be developed using this, this terms mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. The proposed system is simple, comprehensive, and conforms with present embry embryological knowledge. The intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith re reliably transmitted reports by the Prophet Muhammad's companions of what he said, did, or proof of the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century, although Aristotle the founder of the science of embryology realized that chick embryos developed in stages from these studies of hen's egg in the 4th century BC. He did not give any details about these stages as, as far as it is known from the history of embryology. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely no scientific training.